everyone. Everybody. Look how spooky everyone looks. Oh, that's, that was weird. <laughs> I tried my best. <laughs> oh, your earrings, I just noticed them. Welcome to my home. I'm Dr. Mark Catala, and this is part of our Halloween spooky series of spooky topics in psychology. I'm dressed as Steve Jobs, and so I'm trying to get you guys to buy Apple products. That's my prop. And uh, maybe we could go around and everybody could introduce themselves and tell us what you're dressed as. Hi, I'm Zach, but I'm also David S. Pumpkins. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'm a celestial witch. I'm Annie, and I am a pumpkin. I'm Maddie, and I'm a bruised banana. Oh. <laughs> I'm Will, and I'm Clint Eastwood from The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Outstanding. Very good. So the topic we're going to talk about today, so these are spooky topics. And so I want to talk about the Zimbardo, the Stanford Prison Experiment, and Stanley Milgram's research on obedience and whether that research ever should have been done, whether it was unethical, or whether it gave us insights into humanity that we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Who would like to voice an opinion? You look like you have a thought. I do. Please go ahead. <laughs> I mean, most bananas don't think, but <laughs> I've got something. <laughs> so, um, the Stanford prison experiment, I think, gave a little bit of insight on what um, that like power or authority can like mm -hmm. do to people and how it can make them act and behave. Um, as we have seen with that experiment, the um, wardens, so to speak, really got like a superiority to complex, sure. even though it was completely random and it just got really destructive and really aggressive and they were really like abusive of their power. Um, and I yeah, the guards were sadistic. Yes. And, and they didn't start out that way. It, that's a lot better to put students. it than abusive of power. Um, <laughs> no, I don't know about that. But I feel like in a lot of situations, we can see like people who are in positions of power abusing their power, right. and like, I mean, I'm not trying to get like political or anything, but I like see on the news with like cops, like mm -hmm. you know, shooting people in the back like ten times when like probably after like no shots or one shot, like that was all that was needed. So abuse of power. Yeah. So you see this all over the place, and it, see that people in authority, people in power often mm -hmm. do abuse their power. Um, so I think that did give a little insight on human behavior and like what happens if you put people in a position of power, sure. especially power that isn't like controlled, that has like no like limits. Because limits. with the way the study was structured, they were not very clear on like the limits of where they were well, allowed to go. And they, they, they had to dial it back too because the study was originally supposed to go for two weeks. Didn't it go like five days? Six maybe? days and then they canceled it because yeah. it was too problematic. It shouldn't even have been that long. <laughs> I have an opinion about it, but I want to hear your guys' opinions too. Who would like to also? I mean... Please. Thank you, Zach. I agree on a philosophical level that power corrupts, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Having said that, I think that these studies, no offense to the doctor, have been talked to death. And I think people forget that, if I remember correctly, practically everybody who was in the Zimbardo experiment was early 20s men. Mm -hmm. This is true. And I think pretty much all white men, which we shouldn't necessarily generalize to the rest of the population. I just think that what you can actually draw from the experiment is less than what people do draw. Mm -hmm. So it's white men are crazy. <laughs> well, they were Stanford students, too. They were students at Stanford, so that's a mitigating factor. They're California boys. So. Well, and so, it's not like Stanford's an easy school to get into. Right. Ashley, go ahead. Please. So are you implying that because it's not generali generalizable because the population sample is too small, that maybe for it to be fruitful, research that there should have been like more studies done like that for it to be fruitful yes but that would be immoral for reasons that we all know yeah so i don't think they should happen so i guess to the end of that point then 
is your opinion that these Zimbardo experiments shouldn't have happened at all? That the things that we learned from it were not valuable enough? That's a pretty good summary, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think it's kind of interesting uh, about it is I, oh I'm sorry oh go, go, go. Uh, I think it's what's interesting is I feel like he, the ideas of like the abuse of power mm -hmm. are almost learned more not from what was found from the experiment but actually from Zimbardo himself and his abuse of power and um, I don't know how accurate this is it was in the New York Post it was I think a few years ago um, and when I was looking up research about this. There's a post that said that, or in the New York Post, uh, someone had come out, I guess that it was either close to Zimbardo or worked with him to some extent, um, said that it was actually a hoax and that he actually told the, um, the prison guard, the students playing prison guards, to behave more violently. I, I have heard this too. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. that they they tried to amp things up, right? Try to get the pretty, I guess, the prisoners to act maybe more rambunctious, something like that. And when you watch the Milgram footage too, those are just actors. That's not actual footage right. of what happened. So it's a dramatization of what happened, mm -hmm. right? But so I just think like I do think I do agree with you that it's you know I think you can learn a lot from it, and I think there's a lot of truth to it. I I, I think how they went about it was probably fairly immoral. Okay. And also, like you were saying, Zach, I don't know how representative it is at all. But I do think that it does somewhat hit on, yeah, that idea that power can corrupt and also that people will fit into social norms and social mm -hmm. roles that they think they're supposed to in some way or that they may deep down want to fit into a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Milgram. Ashley, would you like to go ahead? Yeah. I think this might just be one of the aspects of my philosophy on life. I tend to try to look at the bright side of even the darkest things. And I feel like if we say that the studies were not valuable, that the research um, wasn't worth the cost, then what is already a tragedy is just so much worse, uh -huh. you know. Um, but I do think that, and like, so prefacing this with my philosophy on trying to look on the bright side, mm -hmm. I do think that the experiments gave us knowledge that we didn't know before, mm -hmm. or proof of it that we didn't know before. I feel like um, on the darker aspects of the human condition, you know, how far people will go when simply told to, when they feel like they don't have a choice, right. when um, put into a position of power. Like, those are things that I feel like a lot of people try to deny. Oh, that might be, like, humans, but that's not me. Right. That couldn't happen to me. And, like, these experiments kind of have that proof that it could be anyone, you know? Like, we are all capable of great evil. And that that is valuable to the extent of like in the penal system mm -hmm. and in criminal justice, like how to treat people and how to move forward in life. Because if we dispel with the myth that humans, like individual humans are not capable of evil and that, you know, we like should shun anyone and like completely ruin them mm -hmm. because they make a bad, <clears throat> they make a bad decision. Um, that we can move forward and be better because of it. But like we, I really feel like there are a lot of people who needed an experiment mm -hmm. like the Milgram experiments or like the Stanford prison experiments because there would be too many people who want to deny that side of them, who want to deny that I yeah. could do that as well. My, my social psychology professor when I was an undergraduate announced to the class that if he had lived in Nazi Germany, that he probably would have been in the SS. And we're all like, I totally believe it, uh, because that's the kind of professor he was. <laughs> Candy, what are your thoughts? Wait, about that's it? <laughs> yeah, no, no one actually confronted him about it. What are your thoughts? Though? Um, well, I, I, I don't necessarily agree with the Stanford prison experiment. I do think that maybe there is another way they could have gone about showing abuse of power that mm -hmm. didn't involve like guards abusing their prisoners. Mm -hmm. Even though I do see why they did that. I think those are that's like a very extreme example of where that could happen. But I think How about shocking people to death in the Milgram experiment. <laughs> I will get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> um 
but I, I think I think that where the the abuse like was actually happening to people like I think that is oh, is very wrong. Right. However, in the Milgram experiment, it was fake, so it was kind of like in a sense a prank to people. Uh -huh. But I do see how it can be like psychologically damaging and like scarring for people to think that they are actually shocking someone to yes. death. I don't think that experiment is as wrong as the prison, as the Stanford prison experiment, just in the sense that nobody was actually getting hurt, and like, I don't, I don't think the people who were shocking had to shock. Like, I don't think sure. they, like, I don't think that they were gonna get. Well, they were told. They, they thought when people said they didn't want to do it, they were told right. the experiment requires that you continue. See, I don't know that I would ever want to know that about myself, right. that I would keep shocking somebody in the right situation. And right, so, and I mean, you know, maybe like maybe an experiment like that would, would teach you a lot about yourself and then maybe you would never do it again, you know? But I, like that's just on a very like personal level, I sure. guess. But I... I don't know. I don't know how much I would believe like the experiment requires because right. like, like what what's the ex like oh, why? Are and actually, that brings up another good point too because they wanted to withdraw from the experiment, mm -hmm. which is a right that people have too, mm -hmm. and they weren't allowed to. Okay, well then that's wrong, yeah. and I would say, <laughs> right. and I would say that then yeah, that was wrong. But I think if the experiment allowed them to like withdraw at some point, I don't think it would have been. As bad. Well, but, but that was the whole point of the experiment was to put them in a situation like when you're in the military, like mm -hmm. when you're in a job and you have a boss and you're in a position and you're told, like you're right, they you always have free will, you always have the option to say no. But sometimes the way we think about the world, you get you feel kind of trapped. You think that you know they're higher authority than me. It's not going to be my fault. You know, like this isn't me doing it. This is just what I'm supposed to do. You're you never know? wrong if you're following orders. Cause exactly. That's what you're and to like do. I feel like that's the thing is that the the reason like the experiment was unethical was because of what it was studying. Like for that experiment, I'm not sure with the option to leave, mm -hmm. to withdraw from the experiment, that you could have done that. Like, I don't know if we could do an experiment like that today and produce the same kind of results because we have built a system to where we're not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. And like, you could maybe show it to like a lesser degree, you know, of like, how far will people go before they quit, mm -hmm. you know, but it won't be the same kind of experiment and you won't have the same kind of um, things that you're studying because you just can't now. Can I bring up one other point too? Actually to follow up on what Zach said, which I thought was very good, but I thought what everyone said was very good, is, because uh, I hadn't thought of it that way before, about the demography of the people who are in the study. So in the Milligram study, done in the 1960s, most of those people had been in the service. And so they were used to following orders. And so that could be an experimental artifact of its time rather than indicative of how we live our lives today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I, yeah. I, Go ahead, Will. I think the Milgram experiment's really interesting. I, I think between the two, I agree with Annie. I think that one is, I think it's, I think it's scarier. Mm -hmm. I think it is really scary how people, and the fact that it was, part of the inspiration was the fact that, you know, you're talking about Asa, you know, part it was inspired by the fact people what they were willing to do, right. the absolute atrocities. I, I honestly think, and kind of actually going with what you were saying with Ashley, like learning from your mistakes and learning from past atrocities. I actually feel like Milgram was fairly important to do, even mm -hmm. if it crossed some lines, because. First of all, nobody did get hurt at the end of the day. There might have been some psychological damage, but nobody physically was hurt. But I think it is important that we learn from something like what happened in Nazi Germany sure, of and how awful it is. And the fact that I think sometimes, you know, you think, well, that happened there, can't happen here. Well, I think, you know, we are human beings. We're not just Americans, German. We're human beings. We are capable, unfortunately, of doing horrible, horrible things. Right. And I think that was huge because, I mean, you hear about all the time, you know, people saying we were just following orders. And I think, so I do think that that was important. It was, it's kind of scary to see how far I think people will go. go. Yeah. yeah. I would like to respond Please. to something that's been said a couple times. Um, and this may just be me, but... 
I think that the studies were pretty atrocious. Like even the Milgram experiments were pretty horrible because yes, no one was physically hurt, no one was abused in that kind of sense. But I do think that the mental abuse that they went through shouldn't be invalidated. Right. Like that is that is something that wrecked them. Like if you know that about yourself, that you can through obedience be essentially have the capacity to kill someone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd be able to live my life the right. same way after that. I don't think I'd ever be able to really trust myself. And like with the Stanford prison experiments, like they did all of, all of the participants went to therapy afterwards, mm -hmm. you know, all of them needed help. Well, Zimbardo but, though, he had people fill out sheets because he's, his point, because he's gotten a lot of crap about this over the years, and he has said that there's been no long-term negative yeah. effects for the people who are in the study. Yeah. Now that's debatable because he has a vested interest in saying that. Um, but yeah, so he he had people do check off things with it. Well, the other thing though uh -huh. is that but, there was a difference between the type of therapy that they went through if they were prisoners or if they were wardens. And like if you look at the interviews too, the warden stories are a lot. Um, I'd say more interesting because, like the prisoners, mm. yeah, like they were they were abused and they and were they get rebellious, and and yeah, and they, you know. But like, that's how you're supposed to respond, you know. There's no there's no existential crisis there. Like I was hurt, it hurt me. I am upset. Like I'm trying to move past it. That's like all natural. But like I feel like the process of getting over like committing atrocities is a very different mental process True. and something that's very stigmatized because I feel like again with like the penal system like we have this idea that like if you do bad things you are a bad person and that's very difficult to like separate those two mm -hmm. so like that's where like a lot of like cognitive dissonance comes from where like you know you say you believe something and then you do something that defies that and now you've got to make a decision of well do I still believe that thing or was this just a mistake? Was this circumstantial? Was mm -hmm. this me lacking judgment for a minute? And until you change one of those things, then you're left with this feeling where you're like, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm doing, you know? No, that's, this is a very good point. Any other thoughts? Well, <clears throat> Go ahead, I think we've been talking about how like it was important that these studies be done, that mm -hmm. we get the results of these. I don't see why they had to be done. There's mm -hmm. plenty of atrocities that have been committed globally that we could point at. So at least the scholars, you know, the people studying them that didn't actually participate, they didn't learn anything about themselves. I don't see why they couldn't just look at something else. And, and I think the, the, the counter to that would be that it, this is a controlled experiment where people aren't really... And then we can ask some questions afterwards. I don't disagree with you. Personally, I don't think either study should have ever been done. But I'm interested also in the people who view this, what you guys think. And so please uh, leave comments. Uh, we'd like you to like this video, subscribe, and please leave your thoughts about the Zimbardo and Milgram studies. And thank you for listening to our discussion. <laughs> That's very good. Good. Very good. Okay. I agree with you, but I think that that goes off of 